Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Quijano. Michigan Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar just held a news conference following their canceled trip to Israel and the Palestinian territories. Both Tlaib and Omar were originally barred from entering the country. Congresswoman Tlaib was ultimately allowed to enter the West Bank to visit her aging grandmother if she signed an agreement not to promote a boycott of Israel. Tlaib initially accepted the offer but ultimately declined. Fighting back tears, Tlaib compared Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to President Trump. The delegation would have seen firsthand why walls are destructive, not productive. They could have asked the people in Bethlehem how walls cut people off away from economic opportunities, from a way to live, and do psychological damage that lasts forever. All I can do as her granddaughter is help humanize her and the Palestinian people's plight. I know that when we can finally see them as deserving of human dignity, everyone who lives there will be able to live in peace. It is unfortunate that Prime Minister Netanyahu has apparently taken a page out of Trump's book and even direction from Trump to deny this opportunity. And yes, while folks are shocked that this happened to us, but today we will hear from folks who will help show the reality for many who have been barred from going to, into Israel not to be even able to reach the Palestinian people. They are fellow Americans who cannot visit their families or their loved ones. They should be deep, all of us should be deeply disturbed. All of us Americans should be deeply disturbed. Joining me now are Adriana Diaz and Paula Reed. Adriana is a CBS News national correspondent. She was at the press conference in St. Paul. And Paula Reed is a CBS News White House correspondent. Welcome to both of you. Adriana, I want to start with you. You asked Congresswoman Tlaib what she had to say to her grandmother. What did she tell you? really talked about was how this trip to Israel, it was on again and then off again. And in the middle of it all, Representative Tlaib wrote a letter to Israel appealing their decision to ban them, saying, please give me this chance to see my, my grandmother. It might be the last chance I have. And that she agreed in that letter, which she signed, to abide by Israeli restrictions and not promote the boycott while she was on her trip. The interior minister of Israel approved that request. He granted her access after originally they took it away. But then something interesting happened. That same day, Representative Tlaib turned down that offer, the offer that she had initiated, and said she will not be going to Israel under those conditions, conditions which she originally agreed to. So I asked her, I said, why did you make that request? Once it was granted, why did, the, why did you change your position? And she spoke about her grandmother. She said at 3 o'clock in the morning, she spoke to her grandmother in, in, in the Palestinian territory and with the rest of her family, and that they decided as a family that they would not support her going to Israel under these conditions where she would have to restrict her freedom of speech. She said that her grandmother called her a bird. She said that her grandmother said, you are my bird, you are free, you need to fly, and you can't come into this cage to be here with me. She got emotional as she recounted that story, and she explained that that was the reason why she changed course, why even though Israel eventually came around and granted her request, uh, she her letter was convincing to the interior minister that she denied the, uh, the the request to go in the end. In response, Israel's interior minister wrote on Twitter that apparently her dislike for Israel is stronger than her love for her grandmother. Hmm, interesting. Um, Paula, let me turn to you. We heard Representative Tlaib say that Benjamin Netanyahu is taking a page out of President Trump's playbook. What has the relationship been like between the two leaders? It's been pretty cozy, and what's so interesting about this specific situation, Elaine, is Netanyahu really went beyond uh, the traditional diplomatic norms by barring a visit from two congressional lawmakers. Now, he did not explicitly say he did that because President Trump encouraged him to, but it was clear that President Trump was applying pressure. And quite frankly, it's not clear that President Trump really cared whether these two lawmakers actually made it to Israel. What he wanted was the controversy because the president has been feuding with the so-called squad of four freshman lawmakers for months. He wants to gin up controversy, get attention for this group of freshman lawmakers in an effort to brand them the new face of the Democratic Party. As he heads into 2020, he basically is making this pitch that, look, I know some people have a problem with me, but just as he said to New Hampshire voters last week, love me or hate me, the alternative is worse. And he's trying to convince people that the alternative is represented by this group of four freshman lawmakers. 
when in fact these four, they're actually kind of outside the mainstream of the Democratic Party. They don't have any true uh, legislative heft, if you will. The leader of the party is still Nancy Pelosi. But Trump wants to convince his supporters that if they don't continue supporting him and voting for him, it's this group of women who will be running the country. Important political context there. Um, Adriana, what can you tell us about the other speakers at this news conference? Well, this is a really interesting event, Elaine, because these women, the congressmen, brought together other speakers who represent both the Jewish American and Palestinian American community. These were constituents of Ilhan Omar's. We are in St. Paul, Minnesota, so Representative Omar hosted this event to provide her an opportunity for herself and for Representative Tlaib to speak about this issue, but to also give voice to other members of her community who are both Jew Jewish and Palestinian to shed light on their experiences going to Israel and trying to enter Palestinian authorities. They talked about interrogation. Interrogations. They talked about humiliation. They talked about uh, being questioned for 10 hours at a time, uh, having their social media accounts looked through uh, by Israeli security forces um, who control those checkpoints, and really talked about how this is um, what they say an injustice and how there are people both on the Jewish and the, the Palestinian side who are coming together to try to raise their voices and bring attention to this issue. And the congressman also spoke about the fact that the, the, the attention is here right Right now, the national attention on this story, on how this has been a dizzying timeline of off again, off again, uh, you know, circumstances about, around this trip. But they want to keep the attention on what they say are human rights violations among being um, human rights violations that are being experienced by Palestinians living in the territories in Israel. All right, Adriana Diaz reporting from St. Paul for us. Adriana, thank you very much.